I'm going to call my video today the Trojan Horse. And by this I mean essentially the administration of President Obama. I'm not launching my criticism at him directly, but towards the entire outset, uh, the entire premise of the Democratic Party leadership as a whole. It's, that doesn't mean I'm going to vote Republican. It just means that we are we are being betrayed on all sides. And the Obama presidency was the perfect vehicle to do this. I'm also going to state up front that I was as let's say, not a full supporter of Obama, uh, but I did vote for him uh, in the hopes that we could turn back this fascistic tide uh, coming from the other side. But it seems um, actually that it has uh, deepened that situation in the long run. And that's a very sobering thought. For somebody that has been observing politics for quite a long time, not just in the last four uh, years or the last two election cycles, it doesn't come as a complete surprise, but the brazenness of it, the brazenness of it all, is deeply unsettling. So I want to talk today about Obama's sellout on taxes, and that's precisely what it is. And I'm going to read uh, some excerpts from Michael Hudson's essay. Michael Hudson is an economist, and which in part sums up my sentiment. Um, almost completely. Here it goes. By Michael Hudson. I almost feel naive for being so angry at President Obama's betrayal of his campaign promises regarding taxes. I never harbored much hope that he actually intended to enact reforms that his supporters that his supporters expected. Not after he appointed the most right-wing of Clintonomics gang, Larry Summers, Tim Geithner, Ben Bernanke, and then the other Bush neoliberals. But there is something so unfair and wrong that I could not prevent myself from waking up early Tuesday morning to think through the consequences of President Obama's sellout in the years to come. Contrary to his pretense of saving the economy, his action will intensify debt deflation and financial depression, paving the way for a long-term tax shift from the wealthy to labor and to the working classes. In achieving such a giveaway <laughs> that Democrats could never or would never have let George Bush or other Republicans enact, saving political face, that is, Obama has laid himself open to the campaign slogan that brought down Prime Minister of Britain, Tony Blair, namely, you can't believe a word he says. He has lost support not only personally, but also, as rightfully Republicans anticipate, for much of his party in 2012. You seriously have to ask yourself what this party actually stands for at this point. That goes for the entire party leadership, by the way, with very few exceptions on the fringes. 
Now, let me make myself clear here. You know, I'm Ella. I'm not uh, uh, Michael Hudson. Uh, I won't vote Republican, but I tell you what, the Republican Party itself is such uh, a mediocre and vicious enterprise uh, at this point that they can also no longer be trusted by any citizen at all. So, <laughs> let me continue with uh, this essay. Yet Obama has only done what politicians normally do. He has delivered up his constituency, constituency to his five campaign backers, the same Wall Street donors who back Republicans. What's the point of having a constituency if you can't sell it? The problem isn't that it's the problem is that it's not going to stop here. Monday's deal to reinstate the Bush era tax cuts for more than two years is a setup for a one, two, three punch. First, many former Democratic and Independent voters will simply vote with their backsides. In other words, they will stay home entirely because they are entirely disgusted. Thus enabling even more Republicans to come in and to legislate the cuts in perpetuity in 2012. An estimated four trillion to the rich over time. Second, Obama's Republican Act, and I hate to call it a compromise, because it isn't freeze income for the wealthiest classes to send, to, to send their income abroad to economies not yet wrecked by the neoliberals. This paves the way for a foreign exchange crisis. So to save the dollar, the Republicans will propose to replace a progressive income tax with a uniform flat, ta flat tax. Remember Steve, For Steve Forbes? from years ago? Yeah, I bet you don't. Falling on wage earners, not on wealth or finance, insurance or real estate. And then you'll get the added value tax, the VAT tax, to basically push up all consumer prices. Good deal, isn't it? Third, the tax giveaway includes a $120 billion reduction in Social Security contributions by labor, reducing the FICA wage withholding from 6.2% to 4.2%. That's two percentage points. Obama has ingeniously designed the plan to dovetail very neatly with his Ball simpson Deficit Commission, pressing to reduce social benefits on all scales, including Social Security, and it's now being touted, and, and I'm ad-libbing here, and it's now being touted as something good for the population. Look, you know, you, you, you don't have to contribute as many taxes as you used to, and it's all good. Well, essentially what that means is a deliberate destruction of the social security system in the United States by underfunding it in the first place. So if the entire funding issue were to become a problem 70 years from now, it is definitely going to take up speed after this legislation. And people actually believe that this is good for them or for future generations. So the game plan is not merely to free the income of the wealthiest class to offshore itself into assets dominated in harder currencies. No, it is to scrap the entire progressive, progressive tax system altogether. 
the Democratic Congress is making only token, hand-wringing protests against this plan, no doubt with an eye looking forward to their next campaign contributions. The, tactic, the tactics of this fiscal game sequence are so time-tested that there should not be any surprise at all. So President Obama's deal is not only financial and fiscal in scope, it is a political game-changer. When congressional Democrats sign on to this betrayal, of their major election promise, they will be rebranding their claim to be the non-Wall Street Party, which is patently absurd at this point. But, you know, facts don't matter. It is the PR that counts, according to George Lakoff, and the messages that should be put out. And not the actual true policies which people may want to know about. Barack Obama was trained as a lawyer and I've really rarely met a lawyer who understands even basic economics. That's not their mindset. They've made deals, they usually make deals to minimize risk or risk of surprises, often settling in the middle. That is the legal pragmatism. Pragmatism. When candidate Obama promised change, I don't think he had any particular economic change in mind. It was merely a modus operandi. I suspect that President Obama truly thought that uh, he was merely being a referee on bringing the people together rather than fulfilling his mandate. Should I go on? Or does anybody even care? <laughs>